Brothers and sisters in the Lord, I would like to invite you to listen, watch, and be serious in our Beya Sunday School every 9.30 in the morning on our Beya Facebook page and YouTube channel. It is important that you will be able to listen to relevant lessons that will be brought to you by our Sunday School teacher, Dean Ramsey Colorado, a retired certified public accountant and a former dean of the College of Accountancy in the University of the Cordilleras. He is a Baguio First Sunday School teacher for many years. Our Sunday School material is the NIV Standard Lesson Commentary from the U.S. The material was prepared by theologians and experts in the field of Christian theology. They carefully prepared the lessons and scrutinized its parts with the guidance of our Lord Jesus. Our Sunday School teacher makes sure that our lessons are in context and follow our doctrines. This is free and everyone can access it. This is for you and your local church use. Together, let us study and learn more about the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you all. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday School. October 22, 2023. Lesson number 8 of the fourth quarter. The title of our lesson, Spirit and Flesh. Background scripture is from Galatians chapter 3, 1 to 18. The Sunday school material that we are using is the standard lesson commentary 2023-2024. Let's start with a prayer. Lord, we will be studying your words, particularly Galatians chapter 3, 1 to 18. We pray, Lord, that you will guide us in our lesson. We pray that you will open our hearts and our mind so that we will fully comprehend your message for us through this lesson. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, these are the lessons we will have for this year. God's law is love. First quarter, covering the months of September, October, and November. And today, we are going to look at scripture from the book of Galatians. Second quarter, the theme will be faith that pleases God. Third quarter, the theme is examining our faith. And the fourth quarter, hope in the Lord. The quarter is divided into three units. Unit one, the prophets proclaim God's power. Today we are in unit two. Faith triumphs, law fails. And we are in the fourth lesson of this unit. And we will continue with the study of Galatians in, in the next week. Unit 3 will be Christ frees, law enslaves. Quarter at a glance. So Paul is teaching us that the law of Moses is not enough for salvation. So we learn from lesson 5 about circumcision of the heart. In lesson number six, we see while the law is holy, it cannot bring salvation. And then, lesson number seven, it says that if people could gain right standing with God through the law, Christ would have died in vain. And lesson number eight, which is today, the law of Moses cannot bring presence of the Spirit. And next week will be lesson number nine, becoming a child of God. So the pattern of our Sunday school, we go through the scripture, both in English and Tagalog. Later on, we go back and analyze this verse by verse. Galatians 3, 1 to 14. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? 
Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? After beginning by means of the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Have you experienced so much in vain if it really was in vain? So again I ask, does God give you His Spirit and work miracles among you by the works of the law or by your believing what you hear? So also Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. The scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. As it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of law. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God because the righteous will live by faith. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, it says, the person who does these things will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, Curse is everyone who is hung on a pole. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Sa Tagalog, naihibang na ba kayong mga taga-Galasya? Sino ang nakagayuma sa inyo? Maliwanag na ipinihayag sa inyo ang pagkamatay ni Heso Kristo sa krus. Ito lamang ang ibig kong malaman sa inyo. Tinanggap ba ninyo ang Espiritu dahil sa pagsunod sa kautusan o dahil sa inyong pakikinig at paniniwala sa mabuting balita tungkol kay Kristo? Napakahangal ninyo. Nagsimula kayo sa Espiritu at ngayon nagwawakas sa laman. Wala na bang halaga sa inyo ang naging karanasan ninyo? Marahil naman ay mayroon. Bakit ba pinagkakaloob sa inyo ng Diyos ang Espiritu? Bakit ba siya gumagawa ng mga himala? Dahil ba sa inyong mga gawa ayon sa kautusan? O dahil sa inyong paniniwala sa mabuting balita? Tulad ng nangyari, nangyari kay Abraham. Nanalig siya sa Diyos, kaya't siya ay ibinilang na matuwid. Kung gayon, maliwanag na ang mga nananalig sa Diyos ang siyang tunay na lahi ni Abraham. Hindi pa may pinakita na ng kasulatan na pawawalang sala ng Diyos ang mga hintil sa pamamagitan ng kanilang pananalig sa Kanya at ipinahayag na kay Abraham noon pa ang mabuting balita. Sa pamamagitan mo'y pagpapalain ng Diyos ang lahat ng bansa. Nanalig sa Diyos si Abraham at siya'y pinagpala kaya't pagpapalain ding tulad niya ang lahat ng nananalig sa Diyos. Ang lahat ng nananangan sa pagsunod sa kautusan ay nasa ilalim ng isang sumpa sapagkat nasasaad sa kasulatan. Sumpain ang hindi tumutupad sa lahat ng nasusulat sa aklat ng kautusan. Maliwanag kung gayon na walang taong ibibilang na matuwid sa paningin ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ng kautusan sapagkat ang pinawalang sala sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya ay mabubuhay ngunit ang kautusan ay hindi nasasalalay sa pananalig sa Diyos sapagkat sinasabi ng kasulatan ang tumutupad sa hiningi ng kautusan ay mabubuhay sa pamamagitan nito. Tinubos tayo ni Kristo sa sumpa ng kautusan ng siyay magdusa ng parang isang sinumpa sapagkat nasaad sa kasulatan. 
sinumpang bawat ibinitin sa punong kahoy. Tinubos niya tayo upang ang mga pagpapalang pinangako ng Diyos kay Abraham ay kamtan ng mga hintil sa pamamagitan ng pananalig sa kanya at sumaati ng espiritong ipinangako ng Diyos. The key verse is Galatians 3.2 Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Ano ang mga dapat nating matutunan dito sa ating araling? State why Paul referred to the Galatians as foolish. <laughs> Bakit kaya tinawag ni Pablo itong mga taga-Galatia na mga foolish? Contrast the nature and motives of the Spirit with those of the flesh. Iahambing natin. Ano ba ang motibo ng Espiritu? At ano ba ang motibo ng laman? Ano ba yung likas? Ano ba yung likas na uh, kaugalian ng isang Espiritu, Holy Spirit? Ano ba ang likas sa isang nabubuhay sa laman? Make a plan to apply the lessons of the, con- of the contrast to his or her service in Christ. Ito ay challenge sa bawat isa sa atin. Ano yung pagkakaiba? Contrast his or service in Christ. Paano natin may isa sa buhay itong ating pag-aaral ngayon? Paano may papakita sa ating buhay? Lesson outline, not our works. Lesson context. And then, verse 1 to 5 is after the law. Pagkatapos ng batas. Less, verse 6 to 9, analysis before the law. Bago yung mga kautusan. Bago yung mga batas ni Moses. Sinulat ko dyan, that is a 40-year gap between Abraham and Moses. And then, cursed under the law, verse 10 to 14. Conclusion is, Christ is enough. Okay, not our works. So, ito yung isang istorya nung gumawa ng lesson natin. Pagkatapos nung isang lecture, yung teacher ay pumunta na sa kanyang opisina. Ang lesson nila ay God's grace and our response. Yun yung tema ng lecture. And then, isa sa mga babaeng estudyante niya ay sumunod sa kanya sa opisina. She explained that she had messed up a lot of her life and felt that Christ could not forgive her of all of it. Sabi niya, pinaliliwanag niya na napakarami niyang mga form, mga kasalanan, mga kapalpakan sa kanyang buhay. At sa tingin niya ay, malayo na ako, hindi na ako kayang patawarin ng Diyos. At sinabi niya na bago siya, bago niya sinuko ang kanyang buhay sa Diyos, sa pamamagitan ng at ipakita ito sa isang pautismo ay Ginusto muna niya, pinilit niya muna ng pilitin, pinilit niya muna ng itama ang kanyang buhay bago niya dinala ang kanyang sarili at isurrender ang buhay niya sa Diyos. So, sabi nung nag-lecture, sumulat, ay pinaliwanag niya na mabuti. Whether I did my best to explain that whether our works have been mostly decent or full of evil, Walang diferensya, sabi niya, pinaliwanag sa kanya, walang diferensya. kung ang naging buhay natin ay maganda, mostly, halos maganda lahat, o kaya ay punong-puno ng mga kasalanan, pare-pareho lang tayo, kailangan natin pumunta kay Jesus dahil lahat tayo pare-pareho ang nangangailangan ng kaligtasan na ibinibigay ni Jesus. Yun ang kanyang paligaw. It is not our works. Ang kaligtasan ay nanggagaling kay Jesus. 
The Galatians might have related to her a story as well. So that, sabi dito, ito, itong sinasabi ng babae na siya ay hindi na hindi sapat yung ginawa niya para siya ay maligtas, ay ganun din ang kaisipan nitong mga Galatians na pag-uusapan natin. Pwede niyang i-relate na tinatrabaho rin ng mga Galatia yung kanilang kaligtasan. Faith is well and good, they might have said, but what of the love of Moses? Yan, ito ang tanong nila. Okay, so ang panalampalataya maganda. Maganda. Nakakabuti. Pero ano naman yung batas ni Moses? Ano yung role ng batas ni Moses? Yan, yun ang real life crisis. Yun ang nangyayari ngayon dun sa Galatia, sa mga churches dun sa Galatia. Bakit? Well, Paul is confronting a menace to the church he had planted in the province of Galatia. Mangyari, si Paul ang nag-umpisa dun sa mga churches sa Galatia at meron ngayong mga nangangaral ng hindi ayon sa gospel. Ang tawag niya ay false teaching. False teaching. Ano yung tinuturo nila? That it is necessary to keep the Jewish law to be saved. It was, may, lalo ito mga Jews na to kinakailangan na ah, sundin nila yung batas ni Moses upang sila ay maligtas. At particularly ang pinag-uusapan dito ay yung pagtutuli. The effect of Paul's masterful and inspired Jews of Old Testament demonstrated that the gospel was not a radical departure from the Old Testament. So pinapakita dito ni Paul na yung Old Testament, yung Old Testament, yung buhay ni Abraham, which is 430 years before yung buhay, uh, bu- before mabuhay si Moses, yung aral doon ay hindi iba doon sa aral ng New Testament. It is not a departure from the Old Testament. Properly understood, the Old Testament also teaches a relation to God based on faith rather than works. So, pinakikita ni Paul na hindi lamang doon sa New Testament, hindi lamang doon sa Gospel, hindi lamang through Christ na binabanggit niya ang tao ay mabubuhay sa pananampalataya. Rather, it goes back to the time of Abraham. Sabi doon, Abraham believed at nanampalatay si Abraham and it was credited to him as righteousness. And that was 430 years before the law was codified, before the law of Moses. We must keep in mind that the Jews in Paul's time had a very different understanding of the word law. Ayan. Ito ngayon, mangyari, sa ngayon, sa buhay natin, ay Iniisip natin ang batas na this all civil rules and regulation. Per prescriptions that govern our conduct. Yon yung ating pagkakilala kung anong batas. Pero yung batas, yung batas, yung Old Testament laws ay hindi lang yan, kasama yan, but hindi lang yan. It also talks about systems primarily meant to maintain a right relationship with God. It's just, it's more than It's more than rules and regulation governing our conduct. It's more than that. Yung batas na sinasabi ng batas ni Moses ay it talks about a right relationship with God. To the Jews, this law consisted of regula- not only regulations but also ceremonial regulation. Kasama yun dun sa ba- batas ni Moses. Uh, ano yung mga yun? Concerning matters of worship and diet kung paano dapat ang magsamba at kung pa- ano mga dapat na kainin at hindi dapat na kainin. Kasama yun doon sa batas ni Moses. As or in contrast to the present law that we have. Moral and ethical living was only a part of what the Jews thought of when they used the word law. Now we go to the scripture. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you before your Very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. 
after the law. After the law. So, we are talking here of a timeline. Ha? Panahon ni Abraham before the law. At panahon ni Kristo. Ha? Pa, a, a, panahon ni Abraham. Panahon ni Moses. And then, pagkatapos ni Moses, which is the New Testament. Abraham, Moses, and then, patapos ni Moses. After the law. You foolish Galatians who has bewitched you. And so, I, foolishness. And tingnan natin yung ano yung discussion dito, ano yung bewitch. Bewitch. The Greek word translated foolish uh, does not mean uninformed or ignorant. Instead, it implies that the Galatians knew the truth but were not acting on it. They are foolish. But hindi ibig sabihin na hindi nila alam. Ibig sabihin na hindi, nila, hindi sila ay ignorante. Wala silang alam. No, it's not. But rather, alam nila pero hindi nila ginagawa. Yung bewis, bewitch, there was no doubt among the people of Paul's word that the mga magicians, witches, well, but hindi yan yung tamang translation nito. It is not literal. He used the word to describe effect that lofty rhetoric and arguments were having on the Galatians. Ito yung bewitch. Ibig sabihin, mayroon dumating na mga false teachers at magagaling silang magsalita, magagaling silang magpaliwanag. At dahil di sila magaling silang magpaliwanag, ay they were mesmerized. Ah, nagoyo sila, napaniwala sila, at napaniwala sila. Ano yung mga itinuturo nito? Actually, these are the Judaizers. Sinasabi sa kanila, kung hindi kayo Uh, susunod sa batas ni Moses, kung hindi kayo masi-circumcise, physically, hindi kayo makakasama sa, sa langit. Hindi kayo maliligtas. Yun yung kanilang itinuturo. For Paul, the heart of this truth is Jesus Christ crucified. Yun yung kay Paul, ang kaligtasan ay is only through Jesus Christ. Sabi niya, kayo alam na alam ninyo, alam na alam niyo is Historia, historia na matagal na matagal. Itong si Kristo na napako sa cross. At yun lamang ang daan para maligtas. Crucified Christ so vividly that it was on the cross, on display. The Galatian error was not in misunderstanding but in abandoning it. Hindi nila, hindi sa hindi nila alam. Hindi sa hindi nila alam na ang kaligtasan ay dahil ay, oh, pa, ay ay makakamit sa pananampalataya lang. It does not have to work. You don't have to earn it through your own endeavor. But rather, it is a free gift from the Lord. At sabi dyan ay, hindi naman sa hindi nila na hindi, kaya lang tumalikod sila dito. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Yan. Ito ngayon ang tanong niya. Bakit? Paano niyo ba? I would like, paano niyo ba natanggap ang Espiritu? Ito ba ay na-earn ninyo? Na-earn ninyo dahil sa mabuting gawa ninyo? O dahil kayo ay naniwala sa inyong narinig? Did you work for it? Or it was given to you? Just Because you heard and you believed and it came to you freely, yung spirit. The second question contrasts works of the law, obedience to the law of Moses with believing what you heard. Yan, obedience to the law. Ito yung mga batas ni Moses. Dahil ba dun sa pagsunod mo, kaya, na, kaya ikaw ay, kaya po, napasayo ang ispirito o dahil naniwala ka. One of the major distinctions between the Old Testament people of God and the New Testament people is the presence of the Holy Spirit. Take note. Take note that yung Holy Spirit in the life of the Old Testament people, it was only a promise. It was only a promise. It was promised in the book of Joel. But this promise came to reality in the, to the New Testament people. It is true that mention of, of the Holy Spirit can be found in the pages of Old Testament. Ayan, sinasabi naman dito eh. 
Oo nga, binabanggit yung Holy Spirit doon sa Old Testament. Yan. Nabanggit yan doon sa Psalm at sa Isaiah. And only in Psalm 51.11 is there a sense of Holy Spirit indwelling a believer. Mayroon lang minsan na nabanggit doon sa Old Testament where a Holy Spirit is indwelling a believer. And that instance is in the King David. While the Spirit of God is open, present, there is no description of hope being given to the people of Israel in the indwelling sense of the New Testament. Yun yung, uh, yun yung scenario do, sa Old Testament at scenario do sa New Testament where, with regards to the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Doon sa Old Testament, walang indwelling maliban sa one instance. But in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is available to everyone. And it all started in the day of Pentecost. Paul's point is that the Old Testament law do not promise anything like the Spirit. It is not keep the Sabbath and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit experienced by the Galatians is a part of the New Covenant. Yun ang binanggit. The New Covenant. Now the Holy Spirit lives in you. This, this gift is only a prophetic, prophetically in the Old Testament. And it was mentioned in Ezekiel 37. Tingnan natin yan. I will put my spirit in you. And that was in the whole Old Testament. It was only a prophetic. Take note. Yeah. One does not receive the Holy Spirit through his own righteous efforts. The Holy Spirit does not come to a person because of work. Because of his effort. Or because of the obedience. Considering the conversion experience of the Galatians, this second question can only be truthfully answered one way. They received the Spirit because of their faith. They received the Spirit because of their faith. That is the answer there. It is not because of work. Are you so foolish? Verse 3. After beginning by the means of the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? So here, they receive the Spirit. But it's like backsliding. They are going back to the former. They are going back to the former wherein they now rely on themselves. By means of work. If Galatians Christians lives begun by the receiving the Spirit through faith, how could growth be maintained by striving to live Christ's life in the flesh? Pa- paano man, paano mag-work ang, ang Holy Spirit's tao at para lumago ang buhay spiritual kung yung tao ay bumabalik doon sa kanyang dating hili? Yung, yung, yung uh, interest dun sa laman. Our Christian life starts with, is maintained by, and comes into completion only through surrender to Jesus' dependence. There is a timeline. The Christian life, it starts with, it starts with, you see there? It starts with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is maintained by living with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is completed by relying on the Lord Jesus Christ. All of this is through the leading of the Holy Spirit from the beginning, maintenance, until the eternal life. It will be, it will be true and true. It will be Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. To revert to the old covenant is to disregard and endanger this precious gift It is to buy the lie that we can be made perfect by our own efforts apart from faith. And that is very, very wrong. Have you experienced so much in vain? If it really was in vain, the churches in Galicia had witnessed and experienced persecutions as well as suffering. Meron ang buhay nila, hindi smooth. There were persecution, and that is true to all people. Rejection of the law as means of salvation was not without 
consequences. But if there was a return to law keeping by Jews and Christians, this suffering would have been in vain. Nagihirap sila nung sila ay kasama sa Kristo. Pero kung dahil dito ay bumalik na sila sa dati, then nawala na lahat yung kanilang paghihirap. So again, I ask, does God give you spirit and work miracles among you by the works of the law or by your believing what you heard? So patuloy yung pagtuturo ni Paul. Pagtuturo, yung pagtuturo ni Paul. Doon sa mga gift ng Diyos. The miracles, the work of miracles, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, sabi niya, is, is, are these things because you work, because you earn it, because of your own effort, or all this, the Spirit is with you and the miracles work in your life, all because you believe what you heard. God both gives His Spirit and works miracles. These things are taken as fact. But those miracles did not come from those who were teaching that believers must follow the law. Itong mga miracles na to hindi nanggaling dahil dun sa mga nagtuturo na they must follow the law. Whatever spiritual blessings the Galatians experience came as, a result of their faith in Christ. Yun yung mga spiritual blessings, they come because of their faith in Christ. The faith in Christ, then they receive the blessing. It is not that they receive this blessing because of their work. So also Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Again, it goes back, the timeline, it refers to the the basis of, of uh, how Abraham was pronounced righteous. How, what is that? It is believing. This is, this is a quotation from Genesis 15.6 and it was written again in Romans 4.3. 4, this is an evidence that faith place, pleases God. They needed it is the faith that pleases God. They needed to look no farther than Abraham. Okay, so we already said Abraham lived centuries before Moses. And take note that Abraham was circumcised together with his son as a sign of his covenant with God. And it happened while the Abraham was uncircumcised. He, he was pronounced uh, righteous while he was uncircumcised. Abraham's example of faith in action remains an example for us all. Abraham's obedient works were not motivated by wanting to earn reward, but his confidence in God. So we all know the life of Abraham. God promised him He took Abraham out from his uh, comfort zone and God sent him somewhere and he believed. He had faith. And when God promised that he will have great, he will be a great nation, that his name will be great and that through him all nations will be blessed, Abraham believed. Thus, to hold up Abraham as the main example of person blessed by God necessarily excludes circumcision. And yung circumcision, ito yung linchpin, the very heart of the contention of the Judaizers. Ito yung mga Judaizers, ito yung mga false teachers, ito yung mga tinatawag ni Paul na false teachers, the Judaizers. Ano yung mga tinuturo nila? You must be circumcised physically. Understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. Now, who are the children of Abraham? The spiritual children of Abraham, those who have faith. 
just like Abraham believed. Then those who believe, they become the children of Abraham. Abraham's faith was his defining trait. Yun ang katangian ni Abraham, yung kanyang pananampalataya. Naniniwala siya sa Diyos. Kung anong sinasabi ng Diyos sa kanya, naniniwala siya. From a very peaceful life, kung preto ang bahay niya, into living in the wilderness, dun lang sa tent siya na buhay. Those who have faith act as his children when they too are defied by their faith. This does not mean that salvation is only for those of a physical descent. The promise made is so, therefore, it is no longer that the, the salvation will only be through those related physically to Abraham, but rather it is now through those who are related to him spiritually, those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. So here, we see the plan of God. And it was written there in the life of Abraham. Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. All nations will be blessed through you. So there is a plan. There is a, an announcement of what, what is the plan of God and that the blessing will come to all nations and the realization of this is the coming of the Messiah. Before, but before the gospel, before the good news of salvation based on faith, God had made it clear to Abraham that all nations, so that was it, the pronouncement, the pronouncement that of the coming of the Messiah. Since this promise came long before any practice of circumcision or the law, Paul interpreted it as a promise based on faith. Bago pa, bago pa, mauso ang circumcision sa mga tao ng Diyos. Bago pa, tanggapin ni Moses yung batas mula sa Diyos. Bago pa yan, ay mayroon na yung nabubuhay ang tao sa pananampalataya. Ang kaligtasan ng tao ay to pamamagitan ng pananampalataya. Thus, Paul was not preaching some new or misguided, but the oldest and truest gospel message of all. So, related ang Old Testament, a very, very old gospel, yung living by faith, salvation by faith, is not a new thing in the New Testament alone, but rather it was there in the Old Testament itself. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Anyone, whether Jew or Gentile, who is faithful to Christ is blessed, far from being a departure from what the Scripture revealed. This put the faithful in the same company with faithful Abraham. For all who rely on the works of the law are under curse. As it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of law. So, if you will rely on the works of law, if you will rely on the works of law, then sabi niyan, you are already under curse. Why? Because it is impossible. It is impossible to work out salvation through your own effort. Because you relying on your own that you can obey and follow all the laws, then you will be saved. But the Bible says nobody can do that. Either you do this all of these laws 100%, hindi pwedeng 99.99%. You have to do everything written in the book of law you have to do everything then you will be you will qualify to be saved it is written introduce a purpose of Deuteronomy which is part of list of a curse law breaking behavior everyone who broke the law on any count on any count so therefore everybody failed 
Therefore, all of us are guilty. It's just like and the and the and the punishment is well, you will be put to death on the cross. If the Galatians believers submitted themselves to the works of the law, here exemplified by circumcision, they would be subjected to the curse. Wala. Sinumpa na sila. Wala na silang pag They are already in death row. The only escape was accepting the gospel based on faith, not on works. It is only on faith, not on work. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God because the righteous will live by faith. So, patuloy yung teachings ni Paul. Sabi dyan, no one, no one who will rely to be justified before God by himself, by work, no one will achieve that. Paul quoted Habakkuk to further bolster his assertion that the righteous will live by faith. Okay, so, kinukot ni Paul si Habakkuk. Sa pasadahan natin sandali itong si Habakkuk. Habakkuk is unique among the prophets for his presentation of dialogue with God. Some call it arguing. Ito si Habakkuk, nakikipag-debate. Nakikipag-debate siya sa Diyos. And Habakkuk lived in 605 B.C. What is this time? Doon sa panahon ni Habakkuk, it was the time when evil, selfish men controlled the southern kingdom of Judah. Sila yung mga nagahari, yung mga masasama, yung mga mapagimbot, sila ang nagahari. Their dishonesty and injustice seem to go unpunished. Yun ang sinasabi ni Habakkuk. O paano ba yan? Sabi niya. And then, sabi ni, sabi ng Diyos, kay Habakkuk, I'm going to send the Babylonians to wipe up the nations of Judah. Parurosahan ko ang Judah at gagamitin ko ang Babylon. Anong sabi ni Habakkuk? Lord, sabi niya. It is not fair that you will use a more evil nation like Babylon to punish its own less evil. Eh, namin naman niya na maraming pagkakasala itong Judah. Pero sabi niya, parang mali naman. Nagagamitin mo yung mas malayong, masamang, masamang mga tao para parusahan ang mga tao mo. Although, nagkakasala. Pero hindi kasing sama nila. God answer to Habakkuk was that it was not for that prophet to know or understand all of God's dealings. Yun ang sagot ng Diyos. Habakkuk's job was to trust God. In the end, it was the prophet's faith that would save him. Verse 12, The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, it says, The person who does these things will live by them. Yung mga nag umaasa na masusunod nilang batas, yan ang, kanilang, yan ang gagamitin sa kanila ng Diyos na pag-judge. Paul returned to the theme of the law as condemning rather than saving. The law has a valuable function and that is to define what action constitutes sin. Hindi function ng batas ang magligtas. Eh ano yung, ano yung role ng ng batas. It is to define para ipaalam kung ano ang kasalanan. Para ipaalam kung ano ang mali. Para ipaalam to define anong mga pag-ugali, pagsasalita, pag-iisip na kasalanan. Yun yung role ng batas. Hindi para hindi yung para ikaw ay maligtas. The law was not given to those who were already mature in their faith or had the spirit. Yeah. So, yung mga matured and they had the spirit, they are not concerned anymore of this legalistic following of number one, number two, number three of do's and don'ts, but rather they live in a different world because their action is love. Their intention is to please God. 
Their intention is to worship God. And their life is through the leading of the Holy Spirit. Using the example of little children, Paul later explained that the law was given as a tutor to lead them to Christ. Ayan. So, merong mga example. Ano yung example na binibigay? Eh parang yung batas ay parang yan ay isang uh, tutor. Tutor. No? A guide that will lead them to Christ. A tutor. Yan was given as a tutor. Ito yung nag-aalaga sa iyo habang hindi ka pa nagmamature. Kasi kung matured ka na, hindi mo na kailangan yung batas. Because you are now leading, being led by the Spirit. If one commits to following the law, one must carefully follow all laws. This can never work. It didn't work to Abraham or Paul, and it didn't work for Galatians. Life from the law is found only in perfection. Life from the law, only in perfection. What is the other side? It is faith. Living in faith. Either, either you rely on yourself, law-keeping, or believe. There is no in-between. That is with regards to salvation. Thus, Paul's start statement, the law is not based on faith. Verse 13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who is hung on a pole. So, now, Paul continues to present how, how is it, how is it, how is it that we are saved from the, from the curse? How is it from the curse? Because the Lord Jesus Christ is already he became a curse for us. He became the curse for us. He is the one who was crucified on the, on the cross. All sinners are cursed. All of us should die on the cross. But instead, Jesus has died for us on the cross. So, in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. This is the curse of the law. We are made aware of our sins, but unable to will ourselves into perfection. Therefore, we have all earned a death sentence. All of us are there in the death row. But praise God, our redemption came through Christ. Our sinless Savior was made a curse for us through His death on the cross. To be killed in this manner was reserved for the vilest criminals. Lahat ng mga pinapako doon sa cross ay sila yung mga pinakamalulupit na kriminal. Sila yung nakapako doon sa cross. And because he was sinless, he was able to do what no one else could do. He perfectly satisfied the justice of God by absorbing the curse in accordance with God's purpose and foreknowledge. In accordance with God's purpose and foreknowledge. Ang lahat ng ito ay naaayon doon sa plano ng Diyos. Ano yung plano ng Diyos? Na ang lahat will have a chance to join Him in eternal life. And that could only be done by paying the payment of sin. And only the Lord Jesus Christ can do that. Why? Because He is sinless. He is sinless. And therefore, He can satisfy the, the justice of God. He can satisfy the justice of God. God is just. There was sin. And the punishment for sin is death. So therefore, there should be death. And Jesus died for us. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. So that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Through the atoning date of Christ Jesus, the promised blessing given to Abraham is realized. That's it. The promise to Abraham that through his seed is singular. And the realization of this promise in the Lord Jesus Christ. The realization. All of this is based on faith rather than law-keeping. 
the arguments and teachings of the Judaizers were put to rest. Christ is enough. Who among us does not remember a parent, a teacher, or some other figuring, you know better, <laughs> you know better. Paul addressed the churches with the same lingering concern parents everywhere feel for their children. The Galatian churches were in danger of forgetting the truth of the gospel and embracing a works-oriented striving for salvation. Sometimes our wrong thinking causes us to rely on law or work to please God. But this is not where salvation is found. We cannot gain salvation, forgiveness, or right standing before God by our works. We cannot. These things are accomplished only to the work of Jesus and the grace of God. It is to the and it is a free gift. It is a grace, a free gift of God to everyone. We just have to believe. We receive the Spirit because of Jesus' gift following our faith. Not because we cleaned up our lives or obeyed all the right rules. As we reflect on this passage, we do well to ask whether our lives betray a continued striving for salvation rather than a joyful acceptance. Do we live and act based on the truth that Christ's work on our behalf is enough? Our faith is in Christ alone. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this lesson. Thank you for the teaching of Paul that we just have to believe in you and that you have already paid our seen on the cross and that we will also be clothed with Christ's righteousness if we put our faith in him. Lord, we pray that you will strengthen our faith that we may grow day by day to be Christ-like. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The next lesson will be lesson number nine, Freedom as an Heir. Magandang umaga po at pagpalain kayo ng Diyos.